You're listening to Football for Girls. I'm Bailey. And I'm Ashley. Today we have a very special guest with us. We are talking with Sydney Lewis. Sydney is currently down at Indiana University. She's working um, to be to be the next great sports agent. And we're chatting about her her journey as a woman in sports and in football, um, becoming becoming a sports agent and what that's like. So welcome, Sydney. Hi, thank you for having me on here, guys. Of course, we're so excited to have you. So obviously, you know, over the past few years, you've been very involved in football. Um, what is your earliest football memory? So I would say not exactly my earliest memory, but the memory that really transitioned from what I was studying to what I wanted to become, which obviously is now an NFL agent. But if we go back to the fall of 2020, when Penn State played IU, and IU beat them in the very last moment of the game, I remember like running, just rushing the stadium, right? So this is when COVID happened. We weren't allowed in the stadium. I couldn't even see the game. I was rushing the stadium and I finally realized I had to chase what I was passionate about. And that was my earliest memory that I would say in football that really helped me change the direction in which I wanted to go. That is so awesome. I remember that game mm -hmm. <laughs> and how crazy it was because <laughs> I don't know if we mentioned this, but we um, are big, like Big Ten people also. So we follow all those games pretty, pretty heavily. <laughs> we have a younger cousin who was like 13 or 14 at the time, who's like the only person in our family who is a huge IU fan. And he was like, this is my moment. It has happened to everybody. He was like, so there was so much energy around that game. It was crazy. And with COVID and everything going on, that was probably like the best start to that season. That's awesome. So you just said that was kind of your moment um, where it clicked that that's what you wanted to do. Growing up, did you ever think that you would want to be involved in football or pursue that as a career or anything like that? Right. So I'll tell you, growing up, I was set on being an orthodontist. I never thought that one day I would be studying law or that I'd be working in football, like not once. But, you know, I quickly realized after that game, you know, and growing up as a three sport athlete, you know, I was running track, playing softball, playing golf. You know, I realized that I had to work towards something that I was passionate about and it wasn't going to med school or going to law school, but it was working in football and finding my niche in that area. That's awesome. Uh, so at IU, how did that um, experience like in recruiting and everything shape like what you wanted for your future career? Obviously, you said you had like your aha moment, but, um, you know, like what did that transition look like? How did that shape where you're at right now? So, you know, after, you know, that next summer, I decided to reach out to our head of football operations. I sent an email, you know, looking to just get started, you know, just kind of break into the industry and see what it was about and see if that's the career that I want to pursue. And I quickly realized that IU and working in recruiting built me this platform and the network that I needed to get to where I am now. You know, between all the coaches, all the recruiting directors and all the players, I have them to thank to where, you know, they just pushed me and helped me learn so much, especially as a woman. I never played the sport. I was never involved in football. And I was just able to learn and grow so much through IU and their football program. So what was that like process like? Like you reached out and like what what did you what did you say? So I told them, you know, kind of just I was very blunt. I was very straight up like, hey, I want to break into this industry. Is there something I can do? How can I get involved? And I think that's what a lot of women need to be doing is sending these emails to, you know, the top, you know, the operations, people who are controlling these teams because they are looking for students and people who want to be there. That's really awesome, especially like as a woman in that industry, like you said, I feel like it's even harder to break break into that um, area. And so for them to just be so open to letting you, you know, letting you in and everybody being so open to helping you learn and everything, I think that's really awesome. Yeah, definitely. How was that like for you, like as a woman, like doing those, like working with the team, like what was that dynamic like being like a woman with like all these boys? Right. So not just a woman, but like a peer, like their own age, like that had to have been like a 
different. Yeah, it was such a unique experience. And I will tell you, I was one of two women that was working for the team. So there was one that was actually, you know, full on with the team, you know, she's had a job there. And I was the first woman to really get started in recruiting there, at least that I had known of. And it was just, it was so different for me because I was able to go to these practices and I was able to learn. But then it was like, I was also sitting in the classroom with like our starting tight end. So it was just such a different experience, but I think that helped me the most because I realized that I want to help these men chase their dreams and I want to get them to the next point in their career. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, so now that you're like working on your master's, how does that relationship like with sports look like? What does that look like for you? Right. So I kind of pulled back from working directly with any like team affiliation since I started with Arizona State. But once I finished up my degree in sports law, you know, I'm jumping right back into the game. I'm working client relations as a coordinator in football for Wasserman now. And then I'm just kind of working towards studying. And then I'm going to be taking my NFL PA, which is the NFL agent exam next summer. Oh, wow. That's super cool. I didn't know that was like the process that there was like, I mean, like you said, like sports law and like it makes sense but it like it's something that I had never considered before as being like a, a field but that like like realtors have to get licensed so like of course you do oh well, yeah well it's actually it's so different because these last couple of years is when they finally decided like hey you have to have a test or you know certain certifications like some like if you're talking golf they don't have to have a certification but basketball and football they do so in order to become a football agent, you have to have your master's or your JD. So my choice was to either go to Arizona State or stay at IU and get my law degree. And then for uh, basketball, it's the same thing. You have to have a bachelor's in order to even take the exam. So it's, with like that um, like degree, what do you do with it? Like what, how do you like implement it in like your day to day? Right. So I would say for my undergraduate degree, the best thing that I pulled from that part was contracts. So I was actually taking courses through Mauer, which is our law school here. And I was able to learn, you know, the basics of contract, you know, the lingo that goes with working in the legal field. And then I kind of transitioned into sports law where now, you know, I'm studying NIL. I'm studying what these players contracts were, you know, Actually, a couple of days ago, I just, you know, did a mock negotiation for Lamar Jackson, right? So it's just kind of, you know, learning those different aspects and just kind of gaining that knowledge that I need when I'm going to become an agent. That is so, so cool. <laughs> it's so crazy to think about like that side of things because, you know, you hear about all these contracts and, you know, you know all the trades and everything that goes into it. But right. You, you don't really think about like the process behind it and all of that. <laughs> right. Yes. It's very behind the scenes. And I think a lot of people never realize that like these men actually have someone completely separate that's negotiating directly for them. And it's very interesting. What's something that surprised you like the most with like recruiting or that you feel like most people, like you just said, like that they have someone doing it for them, but like what surprised most people don't know about recruiting. So recruiting, and I will say this too, if you guys have kids or you have like younger people that you're mentoring and they want to play college sports or professional sports, know that we are watching everything. I remember one day my job was to go through every recruit that we had and find his mom's Facebook, right? So the thing is, we are watching, and this goes for parents, not just the children. I feel like parents always want to get on their kids about this, but you have to watch social media because we are watching everything. That is like so funny because I, I played D3 soccer, but leading up to college and in college, it was always like, you need to be very aware of what you're posting on social media. And, you know, i played D3 soccer, but it was still like, you have to make sure you're watching your image and, you know, not posting anything crazy online. <laughs> well, and I feel like, especially like we have, like, I'm the oldest of 10. So we have six younger brothers who've all played football and like the idea of like our brothers in high school, like our parents are regularly, like you need to be careful with what you, with what you post, with how you represent yourself. But like a, for a teenage boy, like that is such a different way of like thinking ahead and it doesn't seem like I'm sure there are a lot of people who look back and are like, can't believe I posted that. 
Oh, yeah. No, I think that goes without saying, like, there are so many players who don't realize, like, what they're retweeting or what they're liking, and we can see all of that. So that's some advice I would say and something that's very unique about the recruiting industry. <laughs> What like what were some other things that you did um in the in your recruiting role there at IU? Yeah, so there were days where I was working, obviously, like our home football games, and we were having unofficial, official visits. And then there were some Saturdays where I was working a pro day, right? So I was talking to every NFL scout that was coming to watch our players, and I was working, you know, morning to night, right? We were just helping, you know, get our players out there, get them in front of these recruits, in front of these scouts and just talking up our players, right? So it's kind of sales without being a salesman is the best way that I would put it because when we have um, unofficial or official visits, I'm selling our school. And that's that's the best way to put recruiting. Yeah, it's interesting that because you have like the recruiting from high school side of things and then also helping the guys, you know, get to the NFL, that side of things. So I feel like really is full circle with everything involved. Absolutely. It's just a very different, I mean, it's just such a unique process and way of like working through how to just spend a crazy college experience to be like kind of like in between both worlds, like throughout college and helping like birds, like you said, like helping, helping these boys become like the men and have the careers that they want to have. What was, um, what was that like com community like with the team and on campus, like around the football program? So our community is something that I think stands out from any other Big Ten football team, right? LEO, that's what IU stands for. We love each other, right? And I think that really created the family. And I wouldn't even just say the community because we were a family, right? I was working with these guys day in, day out. If that was, you know, looking for our next, you know, NIL deal that we have now, or if it was just talking them up or just going out and seeing how they're playing at, you know, at their practices, or maybe, you know, trying to find someone to help them with homework. You cover such a broad area. So it feels like you're a family. And when you work in football, you work nonstop, especially when you're in season. And I was thinking too, as you were talking, like the, the name image and likeness laws changed probably short. I'm trying to think of exactly when they changed, but shortly before you got involved. Is that so it was actually in, I believe it was 2021. So it just really, you know, became big and it started, you know, growing this last year, which is why I was able to go to like NIL summits that we hosted here at IU. And I was able to learn for our players because when they have practices, they can't be going to these different events. So, you know, I was sent there to do that, to learn so that I can bring all that information back to them. And what was that? What was that like? What were some of those like processes and like experiences like for you and for the players like how were you able to kind of like mediate some of that right so I think the big part of that is not only like our community involvement but the work that you want to put in as a player right everyone thinks NIL is like this amazing thing and somehow they're making thousands of dollars millions of dollars right but it's not these players are putting in lots of work and if that's having like someone like an agent or someone else reach out to different companies, or if it's them directly reaching out to these companies that are here locally or other companies that they have interest in, it's a lot of work. And I would say that it is something that is going to grow tremendously. And I was able to help a lot. And hopefully I laid the foundation for IU football. That's awesome. Do you think it will kind of change like looking ahead at the recruiting recruiting process and like but that is something totally new being introduced. Like, how do you think that will affect, like, you know, a couple years from now, players that are coming into college sports? Yeah, so there's always positives and negatives when, you know, there's millions of dollars on the line. But in terms of NIL, it's going to have a lot to do with recruiting because not only now are we competing with the schools, you know, SEC schools or Alabama's or the Notre Dame's, but we're competing against the money that these communities can bring in, right? So a school in Bloomington, Indiana might not be able to pull in as much as a school on a coast, right? So it's something that's going to change drastically and that these young, you know, growing players are really going to have to figure out. And it's something that's a little challenging, a little scary at times because you're going to have, you know, agents out here that are going to be chasing them down because they're going to want these million dollar deals. Do you think I've ever considered that like that, like, that has never even crossed my mind as something that like people consider, but that makes so much sense. Cause like colleges like Notre Dame have so many like 
graduates who like just give money to that school that is yeah that's crazy do you think it will cause a bigger like disparity in football programs going forward or do you think it's something that they'll be able to navigate and kind of level the playing field between schools a little bit I think it's going to be tough because we're going to have these, you know, big dog schools like Alabama, Georgia, right? We have Stetson Bennett over here making millions of dollars because of the location that he's in. I think it's going to be tough, especially for these smaller Big Ten or SEC, you know, those smaller like FCS schools that are going to try to recruit players. Because now not only are they looking at what is the scholarship you're going to give me, what benefits does this school have, but how much money can I make in NIL? Because now that's where the money's truly at. It is such a game changer. Like, truly. <laughs> I, I, I'm i curious to know, um, like, in terms of recruiting, how much you had to do with the transfer portal. Because obviously that's also played a pretty big role in the way, like, you know, the players who aren't playing can move around to different schools if they are trying to, you know, get that playing time. Right. The transfer portal is very interesting and it's unique in football because there are so many opportunities for these players. And we have a lot of players that will enter the transfer portal because they're looking to go into that bigger school. And now, especially with NIL, they'll go into the portal because they're looking for more money. So it's going to be it's going to be a tough situation. And now there's schools, you know, Alabama had more players than any school across the nation go into the transfer portal because they can go to any other school, they can have playing time and they can make money. So it'll be, it'll be unique and it'll be interesting to see what happens in the next few years. I know you mentioned earlier that there was one other woman um, who, who was involved in the football program. Um, but what, like overall, I'm, I'm assuming throughout your time there, you've connected with other women and um, are looking like there's just been a different community, even though it is, there aren't, a lot of women in sports, but what is your community with an experience with women, women sports agents, women in recruiting offices? Like, what has that been like? And what is that community like? Right. So the community is amazing. These women have built walls to protect us. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with this, but I went to the sports power brunch, which was hosted. It's during Super Bowl week. So I went out there to Arizona and I was able to meet with people like Savannah Foster, who works at Athletes First and Denise White, who owns an agency out in California. And these women I was able to reach out to and have phone calls with them and, you know, be honest and transparent and ask, you know, what is your story? How did you get here? How did you break that glass ceiling, you know, and it's just, it's really helped build people around me, but it's also, you know, I talked with, you know, people at IU who are like, Hey, this is what you need to do. This is how I'm going to help you get to where you want to go. And now these women are also going and doing big things. And I think, you know, it's just, it's helped me a lot. And not only have I been able to reach out to these women, but I've been mentoring other women. So, you know, being an IU alum now, I have had lots of girls come to me and say, hey, you know, after I've seen what you've done, this is what I want to do. And I think that's so valuable and so important to me. And it's just, it makes my heart warm because I see these women now and they're going to make a difference. They are really going to change the world and impact this industry. It seems like and we um, spoke with Haley Lewis a couple of weeks ago um, on the sports broadcasting side of things. But across the board, it seems like women in the industry, you know, no matter what the, the niche is, um, are so willing to help each other. And it's not like I need to focus on myself. I'm going to turn my back on you. It's like I'm going to do whatever I can to support you and help you through this journey. Right. We're, I think women in general are protective. And when it comes to us trying to get jobs or break into an industry, we're going to do whatever it takes to help the next lady in line. I know Haley said too, it seems like the like higher, like higher up you go, the bigger the name, the like more they are like, there is more than enough room at the table for all of us. And that's just incredible to hear in a world where I think we're regularly drawing lines at our tables and making our world smaller and smaller to say like, no, like there is, this is a big industry and there is more than enough. Like, please come sit at the table with me. Oh, absolutely. You know, I tell women that I work with all the time. I'm like, just get started. Once you get going and you figure out what you want to do, you'll be unstoppable. <laughs> and did like, you know, you said like you're mentoring and like have met with like, um, like college age girls in at IU right now, when you went from that, like, oh my word, this is what I have to do, 
that probably was a very vague, I'm guessing this is what I have to do. Like I have to do something with this, not I'm going to, you know, be a sports agent or like, I mean, there are a lot of options. What was, what was that kind of refining process like? And was there anyone who helped you realize like, that's what I want to do and I can do this? Right. So for me, when I decided that I wanted to break into the sports industry, it was like one night I had just finished a law class. I went to my dorm room and I was like, you know what? I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do. I was Googling. And then finally I called my aunt and she said, why don't you become a sports agent? And I was like, oh my gosh, why, why is that not like something that I originally thought of? Right. It's law. Right. And I implemented a minor in sports management and marketing, and it was a perfect fit for me. And once I realized that, I wrote out a plan of how I was going to graduate quickly, what I was going to do, and when I needed to take the NFLPA. So for me, I was prepared and I was ready to execute that plan. You just hit the ground running. <laughs> That's awesome. It is interesting, too, like you just mentioned, and I was, had kind of thought about earlier, there's so much overlap with marketing and and recruiting and being a sports agent. like. It just is a common thread kind of throughout all of it. So that's interesting that that was something that you were kind of studying already. So outside of, I know you said your aunt, um, was there anyone else who was like an influential mentor to you throughout this process? Or was it, was it her? Was it, were there several people who, who would you say like was your person? Right. So I would say, you know, my aunt was my person. She was the one that was like, hey, you can do this. You know, if you set your mind to it, you can do anything. Right. And that's what I want to tell all women. But I would say from IU, the most influential person there was Kelly Brummett. She is the sports law professor at Indiana University. And she was able to meet with me. We met for about 15 minutes. And about 30 minutes later, she had already sent an email up to Arizona State University where they accepted me into their sports law program. And immediately from that point forward, she has been my go-to lady. She has really just helped me figure out what I want to do, how I'm going to get there, helped me get there. And now she's sending me younger girls that are still in their undergrad and saying, hey, they're looking for a mentor. Can you help them? And I think, you know, her and my aunt, both of those two women, they have been so influential and they impacted where I am today. That's incredible. I love, I love those stories of the bridge building people that I feel like we hardly ever hear about, but they're the ones who like connect us and help us see like what's next. And like you said, like made the connection with Arizona State is connecting other girls to you is like, how can we bring these people together? That's just really incredible to hear. Um, so I'd love to do some rapid fire questions of like some of your favorite favorites. Um, so who is your favorite team? I'm guessing IU for college, but for NFL. Yeah. So obviously IU, I can't, I can't stray away from them, but for NFL. So I'm either going to have to say the Colts, obviously, because I'm from Indiana, but I loved them when Peyton Manning was still there or the Cowboys. Yes, we have a cousin who's named Peyton after Peyton Manning because because <laughs> the rest of our family in Indiana we we left Indiana pretty shortly after I was born, but our extended family they're uh they would be all in with you on the Colts. <laughs> <laughs> what about game day snacks? Do you have like a go to snack either in the stadium or at home that you that you enjoy? So I think for any game day, not just you know game days for football, but popcorn. For some reason, when games are going on and I'm nervous, that is just something that I can throw in quick and I can keep watching. So popcorn it is. It's a great go-to. It's one of our favorites here for sure. Now, are you like a kettle corn person or like a butter and salt? Do you like the flavored toppings? What's your... Yeah. Yep, stick with the classics. <laughs> um, What's the best national anthem you've ever heard? Chris Stapleton. I can't let that, like, you know, even though it was this year, I would say that was the best one so far. It was very good. <laughs> that whole music at this year's Super Bowl, like, it's going to be hard. Yep. It's going to be hard next year. Apple Apple Music with all of their, like, halftime show and pregame, it was, it was on point. <laughs> um, what about halftime show? So again, I'm going to have to stick with this year because nobody does it better than Rihanna. And she did it pregnant too. So you you got to give her props for that. You, yeah, really do. <laughs> um, do you have a favorite stadium you've been to? So 
I will have to say Alabama Stadium is awesome in terms of college football, but I will say the AT&T Stadium. Awesome. Um, craziest fan base? Raiders. Oh, my gosh. They're here. They are just always ready, and I don't know where they get these, like, uniforms from, and I just think that's that's amazing. <laughs> the the Raiders? Like, the, they consistently come up. Like, it is... <laughs> It is like a whole nother level compared to the rest of the like, nation. Pretty much anyone we've talked to has been like Raiders, Raiders. hands down. <laughs> no hesitation. <laughs> um, what three movies do you think everyone everyone should watch? Like when you're not watching football, what are your <laughs> what are your go to movies? So outside of football, obviously, I was watching movies to get in the mindset of an NFL agent. So Jerry Maguire, I think everyone knows that movie. Okay, and then another one I was going to say, it's not a movie, but it is a show, and it's called Ballers. Everyone should watch it if you want to become an agent, because it kind of talks about not only the agent perspective, but like the financial, like advisor sector as well. Interesting. Um, Oh, there's one more. Oh, yeah, there's one more. Sorry. (laughs) And then the last one, I would have to say Fast and Furious. I am an action movie type of girl, and I could watch all of those again. (laughs) Do you have a favorite one of the... Up the ten. Soon to be dozen. <laughs> okay. Yes, that's a good one. Now, Jerry Maguire, I was kind of hoping you would say that because that is like the quintessential sports agent movie. Have you thought about your like show me the money moment line? Like, do you have something <laughs> you're like, and this is how I will channel that energy in that moment? <laughs> I, instead of saying, like, show me the money, I would just say, like, I'm going to throw a Hail Mary because that is something that, you know, Nicole Lynn has also talked about when she signed Jalen Hurts. And obviously now he's the highest paid NFL player, but she threw a Hail Mary and that's what I'm going to be doing. So that's awesome. That's super awesome. Yeah, it has been, I mean, a week really for women's sports agents like that was so like that had to just like really light a fire underneath you. It did. Once I saw that happen, I was like, oh, I'm so excited for this. Like, you know, that's what I need to go into the game, like thinking like I'm going to be throwing these Hail Marys. So that's awesome. Um, Well, we've really enjoyed talking to you and hearing your your story. It's it's a good time to be a woman in sports. I feel like it's really the industry is changing and there's so much happening and so many women like yourself who are willing to like turn and reach a hand back to the women, women coming up. I, you know, I always want to just keep helping these women because I think we're going to take over this industry. I I would agree. <laughs> <laughs> well, great. It was great to talk to you and uh, hopefully we'll be hearing from you soon and hearing about your next, uh, the next big deal. Yeah. Thank you so much. It was great to meet all of you. Mm-hmm.